Hi again, everybody. Good to see you. And thanks for joining us. Art and I were are with the wonderful Dr. Liz, our fabulous expert on all things medical, especially for those people like us over 50. Hi, Dr. Liz. Hi. Good morning. Hi. You know, Dr. Liz, I've become a, a fan of a, a lot of stuff that you're doing, particularly on LinkedIn. Uh, you've got, it seems, almost every day, every other day, you've You've got something, some video or interview with somebody, something interesting. But I've noticed like in the last week or two, uh, there's been a lot of stuff on menopause. And now I know that menopause is a year round uh, topic for uh, women, uh, but uh, is there any particular reason why there's like a, it seems every day or every other day, you've got uh, an article or video going out on menopause? Why, yes, there is. I'm so glad that you noticed that. Turns out that October, people know it as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, is also Menopause Awareness Month. We have coming up World Menopause Day on October 18th, every year on October 18th. All okay. right, now what does that mean for the average person? Uh, we're not celebrating menopause, we're recognizing it. What, what, do we, what do we do about it? Indeed, indeed. So this day was created by the International Menopause Society. It started in 2009 uh, to raise awareness. Raise awareness of menopause, what it is, what women experience. All women will go through it one way or another. Uh, it, hopefully, if they're lucky enough to live long enough, they will go through it. Uh, and also raise awareness of ways of handling symptoms, treatment options, research, et cetera, around the whole topic. Hmm. Now, Dr. Liz, forgive me uh, from the male point of view. It seems to me that World Menopause Day is not, not really necessary for women. I mean, you experience it. Granted, maybe not all women are um, in in depth knowledge of of it, but they'll learn yes. <laughs> one way or the other. Yes, it seems to me that World Menopause Day is really for men. A am I wrong? Well, it's really for everyone. So, for example, a lot of the women that I take care of in practice have doctors, even female doctors who are younger, they've not been through perimenopause and menopause, don't really, they've never experienced it. And so really everyone can benefit, women, men, doctors, health providers, a lot of people can benefit. There's also interesting that you mentioned that, John, because there's a study that looked at women who went through classes to learn about the menopause transition. And they actually handled their symptoms better. They reported lower uh, disruption of their life from their symptoms based on going through different types of educational programs. So really, everybody benefits. Yeah. So I have, a, I have, I have a, a question for you. Um, uh, there's a lot of now information on the internet and on your website, which is listed in the uh, description below and uh, for, for women, because they are going to go through it. But quite frankly, uh, if could you uh, give the men in our audience some advice for their their spouses or their partners or their moms who are going through this? And uh, it's not just like uh, the hot flashes and that's sort of the, the, the thing that uh, uh, we as uneducated men about menopause, what are the kind of things that we should look for and how can we help somebody who we think is going through menopause rather than just be annoyed that they want the window open or close or, or this or that. Right, right, exactly. Well, the as you mentioned, hot flashes and night sweats, those are the symptoms that a lot of people know about. However, that can be related to sleep disruption, which can then affect mood, fatigue, energy level, libido, sex drive, motivation, it really, a weight increase, metabolism slow down, all of these can relate to the hormonal changes that happen in the years and years. It can be 10 or more years leading up to menopause that women can experience these changes. So the, I would say the most important thing is communication. 
open communication, talk with your loved one, encourage her to get help. If she's dismissed in any way by whoever she goes to see, she should find somebody else. Uh, there's plenty of people out there now who understand what's actually happening with the hormonal changes at this time of life for women and be able to help her and not just say, just have to live with it. It's just part of life, which not that's not true. However, now, nowadays, women expect to live several decades with this, the loss of hormones that happens in menopause. Uh, so what my message is, is to not tolerate. Don't just say, oh, well, there's nothing that can be done. There's plenty that can be done. Right. And so that's, that's a great message. That's a great message yep. of October 18th and every day. October 18th. Yes. World Menopause Day. And every year it has a different theme. And the theme this year is cardiovascular disease in women, mm. which is the number one killer of women in most countries around the world, including the United States. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So they have a beautiful handout, they all sorts of information. We'll make sure we include the link in the video description so that women can see more. And, and men, anybody interested can uh, gain access to all the resources that they put out every year. And this theme, cardiovascular disease in women, is the theme for the 2023 World Menopause Day. Good. That's the reason we celebrate World Menopause Day. Thank you, Dr. Liz. Back. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.